all good things must come to an end. And today we're checking out the last video from Smurf 2023. And I had the pleasure to catch up with Bill Steele from 3D Chameleon to talk about the newest version of the 3D Chameleon itself, the Gen 4. Now, for those that don't know what the 3D Chameleon is, we actually played with one on our channel uh, a couple of years ago. And it's essentially a MMU unit that you can attach to just about any existing 3D printer on the market. It's minimally invasive. In fact, you don't even have to modify the firmware of your printer. Now, the version we played with a couple years ago was the Gen 2, and while it works and we did get prints out of it, it could have used a bit more time in the oven, I'll be honest. And checking out the Gen 4, version of the 3D Chameleon at Smurf, well, let's just say it's gotten a lot smarter and it's gotten cheaper. So that's a win-win. So let's go check it out. But before we start, I wanna give a huge shout out to LDO Motors for sponsoring all of Smurf 2023 coverage on this channel. So for printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description. Let's get started. Okay, we're here at Smurf in Oxford. I've got Bill again with the <laughs> Chameleon again. But there's a new version, the Mark IV, and it's uh, it's pretty clever. It's so, got some updates. So what do we got here? What do we got here? So this is a Creality a K1. K1. Yep. So the K1 with the Chameleon mounted on the back of it, four color changer. So if you're not familiar with the Chameleon, it is a... It looks better when it's mounted. It looks just... a lot better when it's mounted, <laughs> but, but uh, it's basically two motors that drive four filaments and uh, through a Y adapter, which then gets fed into your stock extruder. Yeah, there you go, good install. It's all independent of the printer. Uh, in fact, it's so independent, you can actually feed filament right in the middle of the Y adapter and the printer just takes it as it's a normal printer. The cool thing about the new uh, Mark IV is that we have TMC stepper drivers instead of the old 84988s. Um, that allows us to do a lot of sensorless homing uh, style things like detect when we're going through the Y adapter, when we're actually hit, hitting the extruder, um, and find a number of other things in there uh, that make, for example, calibration automatic. Um, by doing that, that allowed us to get to a simple installation for any printer. So we have one single install regardless of what kind of a printer it is, uh, which is a uh, which is huge, right? So, so just for an example, how easy it is. This is a Creality K1. How many screws do you have to install to install us? So we have one screw that holds the switch on. Yep. And we have two screws to hold the unit on. And that's it? That's it. And then there's no this mucking about with firmware? There's no firmware, no nothing. You download our, well, for this case, we have a profile specific for the Creality. Um, you download that profile, load it up, put your object in, pick your extruder color, and print. So so how does it work? Because we're again, all we're doing is bolting on a limit switch. Yep. And the, the mechanism itself. So the limits, so how does this work? The limit switch talks to our electronics okay. and our electronics are fully self-contained, right? So, so it's running its own firmware, it's, it's its own brain. It's got its own firmware um, and there's, you know, there's a, a uh, uh, you know, an Arduino basically inside of here talking to the TMCs. Um, and then that's commanding the two motors here. This What's really neat about this design is that you have one on this side, which is what we call the selector. The selector selects based on the four cardinal positions here. So that's a camming action. It's a cam action that selects one of four extruders to activate. In this case, color two, and you can see that the, the bearing is in contact with the drive gear. If I move this all the way over to cam one, you can see now the first color is uh, selected. So this moves side to side on this layer, driving the filament against the drive gear on either side. And there's two layers of that. Okay. So there's two that are clocked this way and two that are clocked this way. So it's a very simple mechanism. So, so again, because we're not mucking with the firmware on the actual printer, that's that limit switch that's commanding that, right? That's exactly right, yep. So basically by this hitting the switch, it tells this to do whatever it needs to do. Right, there's a whole sequence of commands that you can in enter into here. Uh, and this gives you audible feedback. Uh, you can actually touch it and feel the feedback when it's uh, switching commands, which is kind of cool. Okay. Um, one other thing that we have optionally is an automatic filament cutter. So some people want to actually get to a point where they don't want to have to tune the filament. So Bamboo came out with their filament cutter on their uh, on their machines at the right at the printhead, right? Yep. So what I did, decided to do is make an open source version of that. 
um, but completely automated. This simply mounts right here on this printer, and whenever it needs a color change, our electronics drive the stepper or the servo motor here, which does the slicing. Oh, nice. Right? So this is an optional if you want. You don't yep. have to. So you can go real simple like this setup. This, this machine doesn't need it, uh, This, uh, especially if you're using you know, PLA or PET. Um, they, they work really fine without needing to do tip shaping. On uh, some materials, like if you're switching between different types of materials, oh. then you might run into issues with swelling and things like that, uh, where one, one size doesn't fit all. Well, now one size fits all. There you right? go. And you just purge out uh, the normal way. So before, because I have an older version of this. I have the, uh, I believe it's the Mark II version. So there, there's a bit involved with setting that up. You have to know the lengths of the tubes. Uh, you have to run a post-processing script on your slicer to get right, it to actually right. work right. That's pretty much all That's gone. That's all gone. Okay. Um, so with the Mark IV, with the Mark III, you needed to know the lengths of the tubes. Okay. N not an issue there. Um, it's based on number of seconds. It'll move it and you're just timing it. Okay. And you're just entering that into our G-code. But uh, now the, with the TMCs. The mark, with the TMCs, they can just simply detect where it's at. Um, so the first thing it does is it detects when you load the filament in, because it can see the tension change. Uh, when, the, when the TMC detects that tension change, that sets a, you, you see a rise in the current draw. Okay. Okay. And then as it goes through the Y adapter, we can actually gently feel where the Y adapter is. Yeah, because it'll be like a little bump or whatever. Exactly, yep. Okay. It's a very subtle one, but it's there. Um, and then we go all the way to the end and we hit the drive gears. Now I know exactly where the drive gears are at, right? Ah, uh, so you don't need a limit switch here to tell this to turn off because it'll, you're doing sensorless homing essentially, That's right. stall guard. It's sensorless homing. So then we back it out to the position before we detected this. And now I had got a firm home position. And it just saves the value. And yes. Oh. Now here's the cool thing. The next time you load the filament, it loads it and it knows, okay, I have the filament. How far do I load it in? It'll stop it exactly where it needs to go. So there's like an initial startup you do where it'll load each one. That's right. It'll remember the lengths of how much it needs to retract and whatnot. Yep. And then it saves it and off you go. That's it. Okay, awesome. So this is all running in, so all the commands and everything is all just G-code generated by the it's slicer. It's all G-code, yep. So you use your profile. We have a tool change, uh, the tool change G-code generator on our website. Um, this is the Mark III code, but we have a, we'll have one that's very similar for Mark IV, but it's a little simpler because it automatically detects things. But it still needs to know where the button location is. Okay. So you have to tell it which axis the button is on, um, how far it goes to engage it, right? Okay. Um, and then from there also, is it a positive or a negative move? So okay. it could be, if it's at homed at zero or if it's homed at 220. Oh yeah, because some machines, it depends some on the location of Some of them are reversed, the right? Okay. The other thing it's gonna have on it is it has a, do, I, do you have the filament cutter? Oh yeah, because it's right? gonna wanna know that. Is it a mechanical one or is it our automatic one? Yeah, because some machines already have a filament cutter already, exactly. like the bamboo machine. The bamboo machines or our free one, right? Yep. Uh, the, the mechanical 3D Clippy. It needs to know where it's at and how to engage it as well, okay. right? So that's what's in the Mark IV generator. But then once you have all those parameters entered, you simply hit generate G-code. Then you just put it in your slicer and you every time you do a this. filament change, it'll just call that yep. up. It's a one-time thing. And from that point on, it's it just works. That is awesome. So. So that is super simple. So I, now you got four here, but technically you can daisy chain these, right? You can go an unlimited number of these. Okay. Because of the way this works with the timing, that's the reason why we do the timing. You can have any number of them that you want attached to a machine. That is awesome. So I can't wait to get that Elegoo orange, Giga orange machine. Oh yeah, that, because that would be. Because I, I, I ordered two of them and I plan on having eight colors on each side. Okay. So again, because this is a direct feed, so it'll, it'll feed filament up. It'll, it knows where the extruder is and then do both of them kind of feed for a second to make sure it grabs the for, filament? For about one second, they both feed. So it'll load and about one inch before, uh, half an inch before this reaches here, the extruder will start drawing in. Okay. They'll both draw in for a little bit. And then once we detect that we're in, we'll switch off. Okay. We'll and let go let of the go filament and, then... and let theirs continue to draw it in. And at that point, it just is a normal print. Awesome. And then you just do a little purge and then off you go printing. Yeah, uh, that's one of the other things that I also do. I wanna teach people how to do purges. This 
This is uh, my, my Bamboo A1 Mini mount. Okay. Okay, electronics, chameleon goes here. Uh, this is a purge block. Oh, wait, what? That's just all purge? Well, obviously it's all black, so you're printing with all black. No, no, no. This is a color purge. One of the colors was black. Purge into infill. Oh. There is no purge other than purge into infill. Okay. And this is 100% dense part. Yeah, because you, you have to make sure you have enough volume to purge exactly. all the material. Yep. Oh, so you so, were... I want to show people, whenever you're doing a color print, always throw one of these on it. If you're going to be using them for something. Yeah, like a little bracket or a mount or exactly. just something. Exactly, okay. yeah. And this is compatible with pretty much any printer that you can, that will accept normal G-code, right? Yeah, so here's a good example. The Prusa Mark IV, the Prusa Mini, the Bamboo A1 Mini. Here's your Creality K1 or K1 Max. Yeah. We do the Enders, we do all of the other machines. It'll work on a here's, Bamboo and... Here's it's Delta. Cheaper than a Bamboo's AMS. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is cool. And so if you buy the kit, it comes with everything and then the optional cutter is an add-on. Right, that's a $39 okay. add-on. Okay. It, that's $39, it comes built. It comes fully built, you just yep. slap it on. And there'd be different mounts for different printers. So it actually have... has a universal mount. Okay. So it has these screw points where you can build your own mount. Okay. Right, but the idea is this is gonna be positioned over the PTFE tube input. Okay. And it could be at any angle, right? Now, if somebody wanted to make a custom one, is this file available? The like file's the available. All, okay. all of the, all of this, yep. Is this all, is this, would this fall under open source or? All of it, but our firmware. Other than the firmware. Okay, which and, makes sense. And most people can do their own firmware. Like if you're doing Clipper, you don't need our electronics technically. Yeah, because Clipper would be able to handle pretty much all of this with macros and exactly. whatnot. Exactly, yep. Okay. Awesome. And all of those files, I say open source, we share all the files. So, you, for example, you want to print your own, you can do that. It's a non-commercial sharing, so it's not fully open source because, okay. you know, I don't fair want enough. people... Fair enough, fair enough. It's, it's your thing. Yeah. Cool. That is awesome. It has come a long way because I see you at pretty much every one of these shows. Yeah. And it, it's awesome coming here, and every time I see it, you've made it better. And the price is the same, so... Actually, the price is lower now. Actually, you're right. I paid more for the Mark II. Yeah, it was one ninety nine. It was one ninety nine. Yeah. So it's better and it's cheaper, so... Yeah, that's, you, that's a nice thing that happens with volume. <laughs> cheers. Thank you. So that was the 3D Chameleon here at Smurf in Oxford. Check it out, link in the description. Videos from this year's Sanjay Mortimer RepRap Festival are brought to you by LDO Motors. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description.